And now we go all the way back to 1992 as we look at the Revell Snaptite Acura NSX. This is a skill level one model kit from Revell and has 59 pieces. There's no glue required and snaps together. It's 124 scale. Now I picked up this model kit from a flea market or a Salvation Army, something like that. But I think it is all complete. So that's what we're gonna try to pay attention to tonight. On this side of the box, we get the detail features. This exotic Acura sports car uses technology developed from their championship winning Formula One race team. That's pretty cool. It's got all the engine in here, detailed rear window, detailed chassis, molded in red with clear and plated parts. Stick on decals or stickers are included. Here's some nice pictures of our car and hopefully in the box it looks the same. And on this side of the box we get to read about the different skill levels and keep in mind that this is a skill level one kit and will look like this once we get it all finished. And now let's take the lid off this model and see what's in the box. Hey Trevor, is that a Ferrari? No Danny, it's an Acura. Acura. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember that commercial. Anyway, didn't have Danny the dog in it. He was an Italian father with his son. <clears throat> so here we have our instruction sheet, which Danny will take a look at. And here's our plastic components. And like I said, somebody did start to snap this together. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to unsnap it and then do it, do it right. Do it right, y'all. And then uh, get it back together. So that'll be an interesting build. Here's the parts tree with absolutely nothing on it. <laughs> well, what can you expect with the flea market finds, right? Another parts tree with nothing on it. And yet another parts tree and a clear parts tree with nothing on it. Okay. There's one of those old uh, flyer feature things from Ravel, the postcards. And we got our engine block here and our wheels, tires. And a lot of parts trees with nothing on them. I think I will do some throwing out here. <laughs> anyway, so I'll clear this all up and get it set up and we'll take a look at it. Hey everybody, it's Danny the dog again. Hey Danny! Okay, so what we have here is our first sheet of the instructions which gives you a great history of the car and how fast it was and how cool the thing was based on its Formula One race history. Our next panel shows you some of the uh, little symbols you'll be seeing in this model build. And then it gives you the paint colors for painting your model. Even though it's a snap together, it always looks good when you throw some paint down. So here we have our engine block halves right and left. And this has got basically everything molded on it more or less. You got the oil pan, you've got your cylinder, or your engine block, pardon me, your cylinder heads, and uh, not the valve covers, but pretty much. Then panel two shows you the entire front assembly, which has the alternator and the pulley belt drives on there. The alternator really looks like a Chrysler piece, so that's kind of cool. Panel three shows our transaxle mounting up onto our engine, and panel four shows our rear stabilizer bar going onto the upper rear suspension component. Panel five shows our engine going into the rear stabilizer component. Panel 6 shows the motor and suspension assembly being popped into the chassis by these two clips off the side and a couple of little tabs that drop in here. Panel 7 shows our left rear axle being installed into the body on the engine. And panel 8 shows our right rear axle with the spring being hooked into the engine. Panel 9 shows the lower exhaust half and the upper exhaust half being put together. And then in panel 10, it shows how that clicks in to the back of our engine block. Panel 11 shows the rear suspension component being clicked into place on the bottom of our chassis. Remember, we're looking at this from the bottom up, not the top down. Panel 12 shows our upper front suspension being clicked into place. In panel 13, we get our lower front suspension with these great shock absorbers all clicking into place on our chassis. Panel 14 shows our left front axle getting clicked in place. And notice that it says repeat for other side. They didn't actually duplicate this in panel 15, which is so unlike Ravel instruction sheets. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so now we flip the chassis over so that it is in the correct position as we would see it on the streetcar. So we're dropping our radiator straight down into the front of the chassis. And then we've got our engine top, which is clicking in place on top of our engine block. Panel 16 shows our interior tub with the handbrake going in and our gear shift lever. 
It also has the coolant reservoir down below. There's our interior bucket and we got colors for painting our carpet and our pedals. Panel 17 shows our seats clicking into place and there's a little side view of how the tabs drop in and what color to paint the little adjuster levers. Panel 18 shows our nice dashboard here and like the Corvette it's got that center console that drops down and then here we have our steering column and our steering wheel and in panel 19 our dashboard actually has a instrument panel that clicks in from behind. There's a nice instrument stickers that are here that go on first and then that drops into our bucket. Panel 20 shows the bucket being attached to the chassis. Panel 21 shows our inner wheel, our tire and our wheel cover all being snapped into place onto our chassis. And you see this little tab here, you're supposed to remove those and clean up the tires. So you can always use Trevor's patented tire spinner device and make those wheels look tasty. In panel 22, our little windshield wipers drop into place on our windshield. Panel 23 shows our rear window being put in place. Now there are these little hooks on here. It says to put a little piece of tape on there just to get it all aligned. Now in panel 24, our glass will pop into place and it will hook up with the hinges here. And then you can remove the tape from the back and the window will be ready to open. Panel 25 shows our engine cover. So then you could lift up the glass and lift up the engine cover and see that nice motor that you made in down below. Panel 26 shows our mirrors being put in place. So you got your left and right mirror housings as well as the chrome glass. Panel 27 shows the body being hooked into place. There's a tab on the back which hooks up into a slot in the body and same for the front. In panel 28 we see our spoiler being put on the car and our license plates with the license plate decals. Panel 29 shows our transparent glass tail panel being put in place as well as the exhaust pipes and sadly on our panel it's actually broken here. So this part is missing. So I don't know how Trevor's going to come across fixing that one. In panel 30, we get our right and left signal lenses being glued onto the body. And uh, up here, you get to paint those. Those are the little squirties for the windshield wipers. And there's a nice decal here that goes on the nose. Then last but not least, we have our finished model here. And if you painted it all, this is how it would look with a black top and probably a red body and everything else cool. Here we have our Acura NSX body, and it is really nicely done here by Ravel. Even if it is a snap kit, you can see the front is molded on as well as the rear bumper in here. Again, nicely done. The uh, molding is quite crisp. You get those nice little side scoops in there. Again, really excellent work. Now, whoever had this before stuck this Acura sticker on, um, <laughs> sort of pointing off in this direction and not centered but hopefully I can get that off carefully with my hobby knife and reapply it. The Acura emblem on here really looks like the Star Trek uh, t-shirt logo. <laughs> Again, a really nice, nice look in here. There is some flash and uh, part sprue clip off marks. Doesn't really seem to be much in mold marks underneath here, which is quite surprising. Uh, a couple of lines in there to remove with your number 16 hobby blade, but overall, this is really excellent. Here's our chassis pan, and I am a really lucky guy because whoever built this never even used any glue on it. So all the pieces that were snapped together are easily coming apart. So there it is there. Look at the nice detailing in that. Isn't that wonderful? That's our floor pan. I do believe this is our gas tank. Um, who's owned one of these cars in real life? Let us know down in the comments below. Was the uh, gas tank actually right there? It looks like it. Anyway, overall, this is really excellent. Again, hardly any mold marks. A couple up here on the fender aprons. There's our copyright of uh, Ravel Monogram 1992. There, you can see it there. <laughs> Again, really nicely done and should, should uh, be an easy kit to paint up and really quick. Now here we have all the components that make up our engine. So there we've got the right and left hand side of the engine block with the oil pan down below. This would be a V6, I do believe. And there's our front timing chain cover and cylinder head covers. Here's the top of the engine, all is one piece. And then you get that transfer case in the back. Now this goes together really easy, but you can see the nice detailing on there. It is really crisp and beautiful. The camera seems to have some hard times focusing on the red parts. They just look kind of like a glossy mess, <laughs> but overall, 
They are quite unique and quite nicely done. Here we have the interior tub component. You can see the wonderful detail here on the side walls. Again, very nicely done. The center console looks correct and looks really nice. You got carpet in there and there's no mold marks in the carpet, which again is another beautiful thing. A little bit behind the console here, which will get covered up by the dashboard. And there's your three pedals, the brake, accelerator, and the clutch. On the bottom again, no mold marks. Nice little pins in order to line up and lock into everything. And our firewall in the back is nice and smooth. Here's our interior components, which include that dashboard, the steering column, steering wheel, and our two seats, and our instrument panel, which plugs into the back. Again, really nicely detailed on there. They got the radio in there as well, so Danny can listen to some tunes. And then look at the uh, detailing on the seat. That texture looks just like the real thing again. Very nicely done. You got an accurate looking steering wheel as well. Just got to clean up all those seam lines and uh, flash cutoff points, sprue cutoff points, I should say, to make this thing look really awesome. And here we have our suspension components. And as you can see, there's actually a lot. This one's actually broken, I just discovered. This part here got busted off, but I do have the components here, which I'll have to figure a, an interesting way to glue them back on. Anyway, there's our two-piece muffler. It's been squished together. But again, all that detail on there is really, really nice. There's the uh, front lower A-arms. Actually, those are the rear ones, because there's our engine pan. Remember, this is a uh, rear engine. Or is it the front? That's our steering. I don't know. Front, back. No, this is the back here. There it is. Looking nice with that muffler on there as well. Again, really cool stuff. And there's the upper front A-arms, which were pressed into the chassis, but I was able to get out. And here's our other red components. There's our little engine cover. It's got the little hinges on there, and this thing actually does swing open and closed. Again, it's got the nice texture on there. There's our rear spoiler. We've got our sway bar in here. There's the front suspension, or the rear, sorry, the rear axles, yes. And this one actually has the shock broken off here. There's the sticks for our interior. Now I only have one windshield wiper blade, so I don't know quite what I'm going to do for the second one. There's our fan here, and then our front spindles, as well as our side view mirrors. So again, nicely done parts, but I'm not sure how to fix the parts that are not that are not in there. Now here we have our clear components, and sadly the hinges got busted off of the rear window, which is really annoying actually. I don't know quite how to make some new ones. Maybe I could... Of course the clear plastic is so frail as well, but maybe I could drill some holes in there and just bend little metal hooks in. I don't know. <laughs> a little bit risky. And it would be a shame to glue the back glass down because then you can't open up and see that nice motor in there. Again, these are like the 85 Corvettes and whatever, where you got to paint the uh, black trim in from behind on the window. But overall, I mean, it's not bad. For a garage sale find or whatever this was, Salvation Army find, there is actually quite a lot still in here. It's just some of the... Uh, <laughs> like, I'd like it to be 100% in here. This is also going to be a bit of a pain because it's busted right there to there. But I'm thinking maybe maybe I can break this off and um, find some uh, evergreen styrene strip and then put it across because that rear spoiler does not move. So if I can get a square strip like this and uh, put it in and then paint it with... Um, silver paint and then the transparent red on the top. It might just make it look like how it's supposed to look. These little chrome pieces here are side mirrors and the exhaust extensions. So here's our wheels and tires. These are Goodyear Eagles, which are very much like the 90s tire of the era. You can see the wonderful tread pattern, which again points to the front. So these are directional. Uh, thankfully though, the wheels aren't actually directional, so that's always good. As you can see, whoever owned this before really never took those uh, bumps off the tires. So I'm lucky that uh, this little screwdriver I've got here can actually get in and get these wheels apart. Okay, 
I'll do this off camera so I don't stab myself on film, but I did manage to get these out so they must all be able to come out. Like I said, nothing was glued. So that's always good because I can get at these with the wheel spinning tool. Ooh, it's too small. <laughs> okay, I'll have to figure out a way to spin these tires. But anyway, at least I can get them apart. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our 1992 Honda Acura NSX. And if you'd like to find some great model kits, don't forget to visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I'll leave a clickable link somewhere down here so you can click on that and it'll take you right to our website. Thank you everybody for watching our model car unboxing video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you really want to show your support, click that join button right below this video. Until next time everyone, happy model building!